These are four art history research assignments I do for my students. The first three can be easily done in a remote setting, and the fourth one uh, requires the use of a printer and some art supplies. So these have been really good and have helped uh, cut down on plagiarism, which can sometimes be an issue when we're doing research issues. Uh, so I've got interview with a dead artist, uh, which is something that was inspired by this image by uh, Douglas Sirios, and he's got Andy Warhol here as a zombie, and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to have students write their research papers in the first person? And it really has cut down on uh, plagiarism quite a bit. So I give the students this packet, and we have a list of some potential dead artists. They can pick somebody else, though, if it's not on the list. And then I give them a whole write-up of kind of the expectations. So we set the scene. I give them some, um, you know, way the documents need to be set up. And then an introduction paragraph to get them started. And then I give them 50 potential questions, which are far too many, but at least it gives them some ideas of what they could be asking in the interview. The first five are mandatory. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family and childhood. What kinds of art do you create? What do you think makes your work unique or special? What is your most famous work of art? And what was going on in the world at the time you were an artist? A lot of students can get through this actually a little faster by finding a fact and then making up a question that goes along with the fact that they find. It's almost like playing the game show Jeopardy. And then the last question is also mandatory, but it's an easy one. What words of wisdom would you like to end this interview with? And I have students incorporate a quote from the artist or a quote uh, by maybe a museum about the artist. And then I have a rubric. All of this is linked in the description below, so you can download this if you'd like to do that with your students. I even show students an example of what a research paper should look like. So the cover page is pretty simple, just with the student's name, titling it. Hopefully we can find a portrait of the artist, but if not, it's not required. And then the actual interview. If students want to earn a C at least, then they do two pages of an interview. And if they want to earn up to 100, then they need to have three pages of an interview. And then the last page is where they insert the artwork, they label it, and then I have them do an informal bibliography where they just give me the websites where they pulled their information from. When I do this in Google Documents, it'll do an originality check and um, that covers us for plagiarism. The second kind that I do, which is really fun for students who uh, get into creative writing, is art history story time. So students find four famous works of art that they like. They have to label it with the artist's year, title, and media. It can be all by the same artist or it can be different images. And then what they do is they create a story using those as illustrations. Um, so we put in the artwork, we label it again, and then they write a story based on that illustration. So all four pictures are supposed to tell a continuous story. And I give them an example one uh, where we have Gertrude and her brother Iskander escaping from a city in the middle of the night and trying to get through the, uh, the walls of the city. So that can be kind of fun. And I even give students an outline of how to develop characters, setting, plot, and resolution. And then again, we're going to have a uh, rubric at the end to help them uh, grade their work before they turn it in. So I have that available uh, at the back. The next one that I do is actually based on um, uh, YouTube through Google Arts and Culture. They have a lot of really wonderful videos that are nice deep dives into different uh, works of art. Unfortunately, they kind of skew towards um, male artists, but I did find a female artist in their uh, listing that I used in this packet. So generally my research assignments are for five days, assuming one hour a day. So all of these can be done in those five hours or five days. So this one is designed to kind of fit into that model. So uh, this is in a Google document. The students can click on the live link and that will take them to the video about the Tower of Babel uh, by Peter Bruegel the Elder. They would uh, write five facts as they watch the video and then they would answer in some short paragraphs about what did you like or dislike about the artwork. If this artwork was made today, what might it be expressing? Uh, all art is expressive. What connections might this artwork have to you? And then 
this is a famous work of art. Why do you think it is so famous? What's so special about it? And then they look up uh, the artists on the internet and fa add five facts about their life. This, when completed, is about a page and a half to two pages. And like I said, we have five different ones, including uh, Pete Mondrian, Edward Monk. And as we go through uh, Google Arts and Culture, if they add more artists, I may take some out and put some in. But it's the same sort of question format for five pages. So that's my uh, third thing that I do with students for research. The fourth one that does require uh, some supplies and access, which if you are teaching remotely might not be available, is where the students will uh, do research into a particular school of art. So this one is a sample of the neoclassical period. They give it a date. They define neoclassical. They give the clues as to how you know something is a neoclassical work of art. We have four examples of famous neoclassical pieces, even labeling right on the drawing so people understand that they're going to be using overt geometry. All the artwork is labeled. And then to include some interesting facts about the school of art. And then a famous quote by one of the artists of that period. So they decorate this and this becomes another way to do uh, research. If you found any of this helpful, I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel and check out some of the other videos I have available. Remember in the description there will be links to many of these that you can use for free with your own students.